As it turns out, the most environmentally friendly way of travelling is by train. And that's not because all trains run on renewable energy, because they don't. It's actually because trains are crazy efficient compared to other types of transportation. So in this case, efficiency refers to how much distance can be covered by the train using a certain amount of fuel or electricity. So it turns out that a train can go much further using the same amount of fuel or the same amount of electricity or the same amount of whatever it uses to get itself forward. I guess it's always fuel or electricity in some way. So in order to understand the efficiency of, of a train, why it's so big, let's take a look at a car, okay? Because I always like taking cars as an example, and that's partially because they make for a nice schematic drawing. So say we have a car that is in front of a red traffic light, so it's not moving, um, its speed is zero kilometers an hour, okay? Now, at this moment, there are no forces acting on this car. Well, there is one force acting on it, which is gravity, but gravity is always there, so ne let's just neglect it for a bit. Now then, the traffic light goes green, and now the car will start accelerating, right? So the, the driver will press the accelerator pedal, the car will start speeding up. Now that means the engine of the car starts generating a force that is pushing the car forwards, which means the car is accelerating forwards. But as the car accelerates, there are some other forces that begin to, um, to occur. So first of all, there is the rolling resistance of the tyres. Right? When the car is stationary, that force is not there. But when the car starts moving, rolling resistance of the tyres on the tarmac starts to become a thing. The rolling resistance of the tyres on the tarmac is effectively a force pushing the car backwards. But not only is there rolling resistance of the tyres on the road, there is also drag, air resistance, okay, because the car starts speeding up, it needs to push through the air, and that is also effectively a force pushing the car backwards. Now, as long as the force generated by the engine is bigger than the forces pushing the car backwards, obviously the car is accelerating. When the force of the drag and the rolling resistance, if those forces combined equal the force created by the engine, the car reaches a constant speed. And that's the reason why a car is using fuel or electricity if it's an electric car, right? It's using power because it needs to keep generating this force, because if the engine or the motor stops generating this force, the car will start slowing down, right? So it needs to keep up that force to keep the car going at a constant speed. And that's why a vehicle, any kind of vehicle, uses energy to get forward. Because we're on Earth and we have friction forces, and that's what we need to do. The, the engine or the motor of the vehicle is constantly battling these forces. So if we want to make a vehicle really efficient, we need to minimise the rolling resistance and minimise the air resistance of the vehicle. Because that way these forces become smaller, that means the force of our engine or motor can be smaller, and that means we're using less energy which means we have greater efficiency. The first reason why a train does so well when it comes to efficiency is because of its wheels. A train uses metal wheels on metal rails, hard wheels on a hard surface, which means the surface area, the contact area between the wheel and the rail, is incredibly small because the, the shape of the wheel doesn't change because it's made of a hard material, whereas the uh, say we have a rubber tire on a car or a bus or a lorry, a rubber tire on a tarmac road has quite a large footprint, as we call it. And of course it needs to do this because road vehicles need to have grip on the road because otherwise they can't corner properly. But for a train, the train follows the rails anyway, it doesn't need to corner properly, it doesn't need so much grip. So it can use hard steel wheels on hard steel rails. On top of that, the wheels are very thin compared to the overall width of the train. All of this means that the contact area between the wheels of an entire passenger train and the rails that it's on is smaller than the contact area between the wheels of a small passenger car and the road that it's on. So that gives you an idea of how little rolling resistance a train has compared to a car or a bus or some other road vehicle. Another reason why trains are crazy efficient is because of aerodynamics. Now, you might be thinking, 
well, there are certainly very aerodynamic trains out there, like the Japanese bullet train and the French TGV and such. But definitely not all trains are very aerodynamic, especially not like diesel powered freight trains are terrible when it comes to aerodynamics, right? Well, not really. You see, let's say we have a train, okay, schematic drawing again. Now, where's the main part of the air resistance acting on this train, right? It's at the front of the train, where the nose of the train is pushing into the air, and at the back of the train, where we're creating a suction behind the vehicle. The midsection of the train isn't really aerodynamically that significant. Of course, it matters a little bit, especially if it has spiky bits on it or it has a weird shape, which is sometimes is the case in, in freight trains, but it doesn't have that much of an effect on the aerodynamics of the train. Which means we can put another five coaches or five cars in between the front and back of the train, making the train a lot longer, making it carry a lot more passengers or a lot more freight, without making it significantly less aerodynamic. So that means overall the aerodynamics of a train might not be very good if, if the nose of a train is very, very flat. But the amount of air resistance per tonne of freight that it carries, or per passenger that it carries, is extremely low. Trains are very long and they're very narrow, and that turns out to be an aerodynamically superior shape, because you can just make it longer and longer, and you're not really affecting the air resistance that much. Which means the air resistance, the, the drag per passenger or per tonne of freight, is actually extremely low. So the next time you see a, a freight train company claim that they can move a ton of freight over 500 miles on one gallon of fuel, yeah, it's actually quite possible because trains are crazy efficient. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.